Uh, another concept is the, the SST and IST. Um, SST stands for Stage Snapshot Transfer, and basically, um, it's it's a full um, sync, full synchronization of of the database, the data set from uh, another node in in the cluster. And usually, you do an SST uh, when you start from a clean file system, for example, or when you have some errors with with the file system and, and you need to start from scratch, then you actually have to do an SST. Uh, and that will usually take a long time to, to replicate the data to the, to the new node, of course, depending on how large your database is. Um, but another, another uh, method is, is, is the IST, incremental state transfer. And that's much faster because it just you know, transfers the, the changes that happened during the time that, that the node was down. And it uses um, you know, a, a, geek, a, a cache setting on the node node to be able to cache uh, uh, the transaction that happens during that time. So, uh, and those changes are the only changes that we sent to the, to the join node and, uh, and not the full database. And you can, of course, you know, uh, change the size of the cache and, and so on. Um, wide area network uh, replication. Um, Galera, with Galera, there's really no concept of um, a local node or a remote node. It's, it's all one cluster, basically. But for high latency network, what's very important is that you, you tune the, the network parameters of Galera, so you are more um, lenient of, of you know, the, the slow network that you have usually in a, in a wide area network. <clears throat> and with Galera 2.0, with Galera 2 uh, and MySQL 5.5, um, every node in the Galera cluster is connected to each other. So, um, when you do an insert, let's say in, in data center one, that 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 change needs to be replicated to all the other nodes on the other data center, and that means that uh, in this example here is that one one change will be replicated three times uh, from from data center one to data center two. So that uses up a lot of, of network bandwidth, right? So you send the same information three times. Um, with Galera three. Uh, and uh, using the MySQL 5.6 uh, version, um, CodeShip introduced something called segment IDs. And segment IDs is a way to group nodes by location. So uh, nodes that have the same segment ID belong to the same location or the same data center in this case. And, and the, the replication happens through a, a segment connection. And Galera uh, chooses you know, different segment connections depending uh, on various internal, internal um, implementation or, or patent, I guess. But a transaction can happen over different um, types of segments, connections. So one transaction can go over one set of, 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 of nodes between data centers, and uh, another transaction can go over another set of nodes uh, for, the, for, the, for the other transaction. And the benefit here is basically that, that you, you, you minimize the number, you, know, you lower the bandwidth uh, usage of, of, of a great cluster for this. Um, network partitioning, net, uh, split brain. So in Master Cluster, you had the management nodes doing the arbitration uh, with with Galera. You know, all the nodes is part of that 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 voting uh, algorithm. So they, they decide uh, based on the primary co uh, component concept, uh, you know, which which component should be the, the primary or not. And so it's very important that that you use you know. Uh, odd number of database nodes because the primary component needs to see more than 50% uh, of the nodes in the cluster to be considered as, as operational. And, uh, and, uh, and as I mentioned, um, Galera also provides this called OGARB, the, the, the arbitration process, which you can use to actually arbitrate replication traffic between two different data centers as well. But uh, let's say if you want to, have, want to have two database nodes because you can't afford a third server or an expensive third server, then you can use the guard the process to act as, a, as the third node on a more cheaper machine. But they probably have some impact on performance. Um, migrate into Galera cluster. So Galera cluster is for, for the Indian bin storage engine. Uh, it does support MySM as well, but it's it's really not recommended that, that you use uh, my my ISM application with Galera, uh, so because it basically needs a transactional storage engine. Uh, and and as with MySQL cluster, uh, Galera cluster also requires that you know every table should have a primary key. Uh, it makes things a lot more uh, 
simpler and better. Uh, so if you don't have a primary key, then uh, then you actually need to either use an auto increment key or, or create something. Um, transaction size is also quite important in terms of if you have a very large transactions that could cause problems in performance wise in Gitter because it 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 has you know, it has a you know, a buffer that grows depending on the transaction size and it doesn't reduce that, that buffer so it could be a, a problem if you have a very lo very large um, transaction that will you know, actually allocate that much of, of, of memory but there's ways to, to reduce that effect of course and, and Galera has a couple of parameters that you can try out and try to reduce or try to limit the, the, the size of that transaction um, and I think that Galera does, which is unique, uh, special, uh, is that it automatically handles the um, auto increments in, in your table. So you shouldn't uh, mess with that. Galera will, will handle the auto increment values for you, or the other configuration of that automatically. And uh, if you do insert randomly, then um, your record will have some gaps in the auto increment values. But so if you would like to have, you know sequential auto increment increments so to speak, then you need to do the insert in a round robin fashion. So always hit the, you know, the, the, the nodes in the correct order so to speak. Um, triggers differs a bit. Uh, so triggers uh, you know triggers only uh, on the database node where the, the transaction is being run the first time so to speak. Uh, and then that that writes that's being replicated to the other data nodes but there the transaction uh, the trigger will not trigger because uh, the, all the changes have been done on that on that data node where the transaction ran the first time. Uh, MySQL events though um, trigger uh, fires on all of the Galera nodes, so that's a bit different. Uh, schema changes in Galera, they're basically two built-in methods. Uh, you have total orders isolation and roller schema upgrade. Uh, so total order isolation is the is the slowest one. It it actually blocks um, it actually blocks um, uh, your, your cluster basically until that schema change has been done. So it's only really useful if you have um, changes that will not take uh, too much of, of a time. Uh, you know, uh, so if you have a very large table and you do, you do a schema change with total order isolation, that may take a long time and it will block your cluster and degrade it almost there. So another way to do that uh, with, with very large uh, changes is, is, is to use the rolling schema upgrade. And basically uh, what that does is that you, you take out the, the node, the database node out of the cluster, and then perform the schema change on that node while it's out of the cluster. And then when, when, when that schema change is done, you, you rejoin it with the rest of the cluster. And, and this has some impacts on your application. The application must be able basically to be able to read both the old or handle both the old and new version of the schema, and um, but you know uh, if if your application um, runs fine on, on two nodes, then you wouldn't see uh, that much of a performance deg degradation uh, of, 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 your, of your application servers. Um, one thing here is that you need to do this this rolling schema upgrade for all of the database nodes that you have in cluster, and you can only do that you know one at a time. So uh, it might take some time to to um, you know, completely um, alter the, the table uh, tables for all the nodes in, that you have in your cluster, and often it's a, it's a manual operation. Alex, can we um, take a pause? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so, so folks, time for a quick uh, poll. Uh, that's the second poll of the of the webinar. Um, which solution are you planning to migrate to uh, during 2015? Calera uh, cluster, MySQL cluster, NDB, MySQL replication, uh, other HA slash cluster solution, or no plans? Uh, thank you for participating. Really appreciate it. Okay, so we have a couple of last votes in and I'll be closing the poll in a couple of seconds and I'll share the results. Thank you again for, for participating.
Okay, so so let's see what what the audience here is uh, is planning. So half half of the um, half of the audience is planning to basically migrate to to uh, to Galera cluster, and um, and this is probably not uh, not a surprise. Um, uh, you know, uh, it seems that Galera cluster is 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 more kind of let's say mainstream in the sense that it does support InnoDB. Uh, and uh, half half has no plans, um, so probably it might be that folks are already on on some clustering solution. Um, and then there is a small uh, portion actually planning to go on NDB. Okay, uh, back to you, Alex. Yeah, thank you. Um, a very common uh, deployment uh, uh, with Galera is to use um, a load balancer. So here we have HAProxy uh, set up using a virtual IP, and we have also load balancers uh, uh, on top of the, the web servers. Uh, so the benefit here is that with HAProxy you can load balance the, the request across the, the Galera, uh, Galera cluster node that you have, and because it's all everyone is a, is a master, you, you get you know they can read and write to any node, right? So you usually can use a, a load balancing algorithm like list connection, for example. That will route uh, the, the 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 connection to the to the database node that has the least least load. So you can uh, load balance the, the load in a in a very easy way. Uh, one thing here is that uh, you have now another you know, single point of failure if you only have one HAProxy instance. So another popular way to to increase that or increase the availability of the HAProxy part is to uh, deploy it as an active standby. Uh, uh, deployment, and you can use that using uh, the you know, Keep LAB, which is a virtual router basically. So if the active um, HAProxy goes down, um, uh, Keep LAB will do a proper IP failover of the virtual IP and assign that to the standby um, HAProxy instance, and then all the connections and traffic will be routed to the to the standby one. Um, yep. Oh, sorry. So another way to deploy Galera cluster is to use Galera as a, as a MySQL slave, basically. Um, so you, here you have a standalone MySQL server, which replicates into, into uh, the Galera cluster. And uh, the performance here, if you compare a regular uh, MySQL master and, and a slave replication setup, um, it, it's going to be a bit slower because you know, Galera does its own replication. Uh, but what you can do to speed things up uh, with a, at least with the Galera 3, 3 version is that um, you can bundle, uh, you can batch uh, a number of replication events into one single batch and that will um, increase the, the, the throughput uh, of, of, of the replication. 